Hello fellow gamers, Inexorbo Warrior here. Welcome you all on my channel. And today we are coming up with a new video on Aliens Fire Team Elite. Like most of you uh, guys have been asking me to make, make this video. Um, well, this video is intended to serve as a guide for playing Aliens Fire Team Elite on insane and extreme difficulty. This guide will benefit anyone and everyone who is new to the game, or even existing players who struggle on higher difficulties. Before we begin, I've got over 400 hours in the game, and it is safe to say that out of these 400 hours, 300 hours would be on insane, and at about 100 hours on extreme or intense. What I'm going to give you in this guide is tested, and have done so after going through trial and errors. I have played with a lot of different players on Insane and Extreme and then come up with this guide. Now, first things first. The difference between easier difficulties and Insane or Extreme is there are more number of enemies and specials or elites. Yes, more. This wasn't the case earlier in the game, but now I believe it is happening more with new and random types of spawns back and forth. And I'm not talking about the penalty spawns for lingering too much in an area. So that means the devs are really working on the game continuously and we thank them for that. On higher difficulties, the Xenos are really tanky, runners have higher HPs, they really hit you really hard, um, they can take away about 30 to 40 percent of your HP one hit. The elites such as warriors can one shot you if you are about half HP or lower and by one shot I mean you cannot be revived as they put you down and then execute you. Same case is with the drone. If you are full HP they will leave you at about 20% HP if you get jumped on and will execute you if your HP is lower than half of course. The warriors have much more armor and HP. They are really hard to kill. The crushers even so. Now that I'm talking about elites, I haven't mentioned anything about Praetorians, as they can pretty much one-shot you from full HP if they hit you. Um, however, when they show up, most of the time they spend are on showing off and posing. But if you shoot them in the chest, which is a weak point, as a team with the overclock, they die in an about a couple of seconds. The synth snipers almost can one-shot you. The exploding sins and the warden grenades can one shot you or leave you in a very bad state. Apart from all of this, you have a very few aid kits which are almost non existent on a few missions. You have lesser ammo compared to lower difficulties, as well as enemies are complete bullet sponges. So, how do you play and beat extreme and insane? Alright, before we talk further about anything else, first of all, most basic question. Be it any difficulty, campaign, or game modes. The basic question is, what are the best classes and weapons? Yes, the classes matter and will vary on a few missions and game modes, but in the end, it's about the weapons you can use. With any of them, you know, like uh, ranging from pistols to assault rifles, from CKWs to snipers. So let's start with the weapons first. Now, I have made a weapons list that are the highest DPS weapons in the game and I've used them all and compared all the other weapons and none come even close to them. In what, let's start with the assault rifles, specifically the automatic rifles. The Kramer assault rifle is number one, has a lot of punch, weak point damage, fire rate, stumble chance, so the attachments were selected considering either to reduce the weaknesses if it can be done or enhance the strength itself if selecting attachments to reduce the weaknesses are negligible. So for the attachments for Kramer would be um, Precision Break, Casket Magazine, Hybrid Sight onto the next rifle which is the Pulse Rifle. It is the best overall rifle after the Kramer and of course iconic alien killing machine. Um, lacks grenade launcher unlike the movie but in terms of damage, it's still decent, making up for it with fire rate. So the attachments for it would be Wendbreak, which gives you 20% weak point damage, 
Five person handling and stability on shot. This stack, uh, this effect stacks five times and resets on reload. A casket magazine again, more fire rate, make a gun even more better on fire rate, which already has a lot of fire rate. So that's how we are working on it. And of course, the max ammo for the greens outside. Weak point damage is 20% again and effective range. Now, Type 88 Assault Rifle. You're gonna be using this rifle is because you're getting bored of using the Pulse Rifle or the Kramer for every mission. So if you're bored of using those rifles, um, you're gonna use the Type 88. It lacks damage compared to the Kramer and Pulse Rifle, but still decent enough to be considered on Insane or at the very least on Extreme. So the attachments would be High Velocity Break, for the magazine, you need a Lloyd magazine because this gun lacks a bit of reload speed and the magazine capacity. Red dot side, a bit of a lot of things going on here. Now let's talk about the sniper rifles. So first up is the Twilight. Overall, the best sniper rifle. Fire rate, the range, the weak point damage, amazing stumble chance especially good on missions with xenomorphs only as the xenomorphs are really high numbers and as well as fast enough for you to need more fire rate so for the attachments we would be going with tanker muzzle break so for the large magazine we'll be going with high impact rounds you're gonna have a lot of CC with this gun um, augmented sight is the large optics we're using on this one so you can see where I'm going with this rifle now the pike is only good if you're a godlike sniper due to its one round magazine it isn't supposed to be used with overclock as it doesn't benefit with it unless your goal is to shoot the ceiling so the attachments with it would be tanker muzzle brake rapid dispersal unit now for the large optics this is by far my favorite scope on almost all rifle moving on to the CQWs my favorite category of the weapons my two cents there is no other cqw weapon better than the m37 a3 pump shotgun in the cqw category anything else lacks too much in general they do less damage run out of ammo so it's safe to say the price or in this case ammo to damage ratio doesn't cut it out as well as it takes too long to kill enemies with them so attachments on it would be Precision Break, Alloy Chamber, Hybrid Sight. Next up are the pistols. Type 95, the best pistol overall. It's got the damage, it's got an amazing fire rate and that beautiful stumble. A very decent magazine size and max ammo count too. The attachments. Compact Flash Hider, Hybrid Rounds, Hybrid Sight. The second is the Burst Pistol and the Twin Hammer. They both go hand to hand, if Burst Pistol got that sweet magazine and max ammo, then the Twin Hammer got that extra damage and weak point damage stat. However, it lacks the magazine size as well as it has too long of a reload time compared to the Burst Pistol. Last but not the least, the heavy weapons. So sadly the only two viable weapons will be number one, the smart gun and the minigun. Well, on these difficulties, the only weapon you can use and not do friendly fire damage is the smart gun and the minigun. And yes, they are weak. And no, you can still do a lot of damage with it. Let me give you the attachments first and we are going to talk about how you can make them viable on higher difficulties. So first for the minigun, we are using tanker muzzle brake, metal twist rifling, and deep rilled armature. For the smart gun, we are using again tanker muzzle brake, hammer forge rifling and deep railed armature apart from these two heavy weapons there is a third option which is i would call it a high risk high reward weapon yes i'm talking about ocap 91 vulcan the flamethrower come on if ripley could use it so could we but damn she didn't have a squad of three when she did so if you use it you gotta be really careful and you gotta be right in front of your team to do it so they can't accidentally strafe in front of you. The attachments for this are phosphorus munitions, best rifling, and deep rilled armature. Now, for the consumables, you will always only buy the stuff that I am about to tell you, as all the other stuff is achievable through crates and caches. 
but this stuff is the only stuff worth buying as you cannot rely on luck or RNG to get them in the game from crates as these are the core for insane and extreme missions. First off, cryo grids. These will always save your ass. Do be mindful that you will need to save almost all of your cryo grids for the end game on every mission. You will need them at the end the most, however except for a certain place or choke point in certain missions, other than that use the coils from the technician as we speak about the classes ahead. Second up would be the incendiary turrets. They got a lot of ammo and are tough to tough enough to go down easily. Electroshock turrets. They really give you the clutch saves by stunning enemies and are tough as well. Assessment drones. Flat 25% team damage. Pop a drone in a big room or horde fight. See the enemies melt. Use them specially for the fights at the end of each mission. Now, every mission, each of you will bring three cryo grids that is for sure there is no doubt about that however two of your teammates will bring either the incendiary or electroshock turrets whereas one of you will bring three assessment drones let's talk about the challenge cards you can use any card to try and have fun they can make the game hard challenging or funny and interesting give you a lot of experience and credits however the best cards to use on insane and extreme are as follows Human tanks. Your health is doubled. Use on missions with less or no aid kits such as 1-1, 1-3, and 4-1. Superior firepower. Your abilities deal 50% more damage. Use it on a mission you have a demo on the team as well as a technician which is a must on almost every game. Ammo hoarder. If you don't have a recon in your team, which is pretty situational, although you're gonna be having a recon in every extreme and insane games. Cause he's not just a mobile ammo box, he's really an amazing class. Extraordinary weaponry for flat 25% damage for the whole team. That's enough said. Cause if you take into account that enemies are tankier and have higher HPs, it's all about bringing more damage on the table. Now here's a cool trick. You can use Extraordinary Weaponry Challenge card on a mission, put up a drone or assessment drone on big horde fights and use the gunner's overclock when they lead spawn, of course. You're gonna melt them so hard, no cap. Do this on any mission you think is hard or giving you trouble on insane or extreme, such as 2-2, 3-2 and 3-3. You can also use it on 4-1 if you're good at not taking any damage, however, my personal suggestion is use human tanks as there are almost no aid kits on 4-1. Now that the weapons are done, the consumables are in place, challenge cards so sorted out, let's talk about the classes that you can use on higher difficulties. Now it's pretty simple and straightforward. You will have to have, have to have, a recon, a technician and a gunner pretty self-explanatory gunner for the damage tech for the CC and wave management and having a fourth person on the team his turret especially flame turret of course recon for all the heads ups and ammo and he's the best suited class to use sniper rifles as well as you can really use bloodhound if you can do well without the normal pop and can do good with just map awareness and keep an eye out on for the prowler basically the general response Use the Bloodhound on the Recon, which is actually so broken on Elites or Bursters and Prowlers, Spitter, etc. Anything but a white dot on the radar. And if you have Extraordinary Weaponry, Assessment Drone and a Bloodhound, you will bring down Elites before they even spawn. So that's your comp. Now let's get into classes and their perk grids. Gunner. Pretty much a solid DPS class. As a gunner, you shouldn't be using your over overclocks carelessly. I cannot express how many times I've saved us with a clutch overclock. But after a while and experience, you will remember all the spawns and you can save your overclocks for them. Use your grenades and side spots to knock down bursters and prowlers to keep them far away and bring them down before they get close to you. Especially for big runner spawns and tunnels. You can take them all out with one grenade, be it 10 or 12 of them. In the elite spawns, you can grenade it for the knockdown and overclock and the whole team can focus and instantly kill it. So as a gunner, it's your job to take on elites, big numbers of bursters, prowlers, spitters, ease, etc. For the perk grid, you're gonna be using quick load interlay 
Thermal Venting. Extended Duration 2. Yes, a little bit helps. Quick Charge 2. And that would be it for the Overclock. For the Frag Grenade, you're gonna be using Shrapnel. Disorienting Blast Mobility. Targets acquired. You're gonna have a lot of recharge speed on your uh, Overclock and Frag Grenade. Technician CQW Training. Recon CQW Expertise. Recon CQW Mastery. Gunner CQW Mastery. I've got fire rate, weak point damage, accuracy all stacked up from my uh, CQW weapon perks and the attachments I'm using on my shotgun so I've got a tighter spread I've got a lot of fire rate and I'm gonna be doing a lot of weak point damage and guess what, what happens when you hit overclock it looks something like this So by now you have one warrior on the floor. Next up is recon. As a recon you will be giving ammo to your team. Do not make the mistake of dropping ammo drone between rooms. No matter how low you are on ammo, always drop down ammo drones when shooting is on. In that way, though be it negligible, your allies will be regaining health back as well as they will be getting the ammo they need while shooting. As dropping ammo when there is no action going on will result in bringing in penalty spawns which usually consist of bursters and prowlers. Besides this, you will be using your pups to keep your team aware of the threats coming your way. Now, I'm a huge fan of Bloodhound, but do not use it until you have played a couple of games on Insane already. So you become experienced and memorize the spawns as a squad and then you can start using the Bloodhound, which is basically, it gives you such a huge DPS buff on the marked targets. It slows them, gives armor reduction, makes them do less damage to you and makes you hit them so much more harder. As a recon, be looking more to shoot the enemies that are trying to hit your allies as this will keep yours and their magazines topped up because of the brilliant perk I got your back for the perk raid. On the pups, we're gonna be using distracting howl slows everything down by 30% the bloodhound which I already explained and th threat detected on the support drone I've got quick charge for yes you need a lot of ammo on insane and extreme adrenaline rush for the 20% healing which is merely 12 HP but sometimes it's a difference of 12 HP between you living and going down the beautiful perk I was talking about is got your back Killing an enemy that is attacking a teammate instantly reloads you and your teammate's equipped gun. Back in the fight. Threat neutralized. Getting a headshot kill on a real target recharges your abilities by 15%. You don't need any more cooldowns. Eye on the prize. Unbreakable focus. Red is dead. You and your teammates deal an additional 10% damage to reveal targets. If you're not using the Bloodhound and you're using the regular pups, this is the core perk that you're gonna be benefiting a lot from. Moving on to the technician. Now, the technician is a beautiful class. It makes your team of three become a team of four. The flame turret is just so powerful and broken, it makes your life just so much more easier. The technician makes and breaks a fight. As a technician, always look to place your turrets on high areas rather than the floor. It's harder to reach and get destroyed. Also throw coils in front and even further ahead of the turret. Sometimes try to throw the coil from the source of the Xeno spawn rather than the choke points if there aren't any. Place places such as ducts and holes for the perk grids, compatibility matrix. You're gonna be using Quick Charge 4, Agile Practices, Creative Pain Point Solutions, Disruptive Technology. For the turret, you're gonna be using Force Multiplier 4, Force Multiplier 3, and of course the Incinerator Turret. Resonating Impact as the core perk, and Deep Leverage as a modifier. Next up is the demo. The demo is the ultimate 
powerhouse and fun class. The downside is that if you want to do really good damage, then you need your heavy weapons. Problem is, we need to kill Xenos, not allies. And about any weapon you can think of, no matter how good you are, it takes one surprise attack from a runner and you forget that you have the rocket launcher equipped and you fire it at point blank range and kill your team and yourself along with that runner of course. However, your rockets clear the room with runners in an instant. Knocks back all the bursters and prowlers and elites too. Your ally that refuses to use the 8, use the eight kit on 300 HP that he's saving for doomsday your timely blast wave saves him from that untimely demise when the drone runs towards him with that supersonic speed. However, if you want to use the heavy weapon, you can use the flamethrower sometimes, but it's too much of a risk and reward. However, the smart gun is the answer. So here's the story. All the classes depend on trying with the right perk rates. So for the demo, it's just that case. Get heavy weapon core perk, take the smart gun, go into the mission and don't use it. Yes, that's right. Even with the recon, you'll be running out of ammo and wouldn't be doing significant damage. So why take it then? Well, we are all using it wrong. Go into the mission, use your rifle. When you're getting overwhelmed, pin down, use your rockets, use the blast wave. See them orange bars at the bottom of the screen? Yeah. You got full stack damage. Switch to the big boy, but wait! Don't fire blindlessly like a moron. Yes, it has auto aim, but between the rectangular aim sight, there's a dot. And don't get get started with me. You can control and aim it for the heads. Weak point damage. When you do that and have the right attachments with it, boy oh boy, you can hold and stumble stun lock a whole fucking army all by yourself long enough for your mates to heal revive reload or reposition make you the savior of the day yeah been there done that and boy i was shocked and amazed myself now moving on to just general random tips and tricks while fighting the sins keep the crosshair out of the wall and keep your body behind the wall do not take cover behind the wall, as when you take cover behind the wall, when you right click to ADS, your body comes out of that cover and you're prone to take damage. But if you stand behind the wall, hiding yourself, just keeping the crosshair out, you won't be taking any damage from the sins. Use the gunner's grenade to blow up random runner spawns right on your nose in tight, place, tight places, especially on the fourth campaign. Dodge Warden's grenades, even behind cover, the Synth Sniper can shoot you, so keep strafing right and left to be untargetable. The Warriors scream before they pounce. Jump immediately when you hear the roar. Jump towards the Warrior itself if you don't have anywhere else to go, but slightly at an angle, like 2 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Praetorians are weak, do not use cryos for them. If you need them on time and use the overclock, you kill them in a split second. But be sure to use a cryo for warriors. Crushers can be easily kited too if they are coiled from the technician. So you do not need a cryo for the crushers. It's kinda useless. The elites will target aggro one of you. He can run away or that person can run away to give the team breathing room they need so that they can kill everything else. You gotta be communicating with each other. If the warrior is targeting you, run away from your team to make it follow you and give them a breathing room and they can clear pretty much everything or every other threat they are facing and then you can go back to them and then now you can take the warrior down as a team. Alright, I hope that was helpful. Um, I was pretty nervous making this guy. Uh, you, you can hear me stuttering and um, you know chewing on words well I tried my best and I hope that this guy proves helpful for every one of you out there and like I said at this moment I am duoing on insane 
without even a synth as our third guy. We kill it at the beginning and we're doing pretty much two man run on every mission. And I've got a request from some of you that you want to see me do 4 1 with just two people, no synths. Just duo on that mission and beat it successfully. I'm gonna be doing that pretty soon, hopefully, and I'm gonna be coming up with the next video on 4 1 with just two people. Until then, thank you so much. If you liked the video and it really helped you out, please consider subscribing and liking. Please consider uh, subscribing to the video and liking the channel. <laughs> Thanks. Peace.